the story of this watch is that we did go to an exhibit at the World's Fair in 1939 in New York. so this video is going to be a little bit different um, for a long time I have wanted to like film my grandmother because she's in her 90s and she has all these great stories and you know I wanted to like record some of them before it was too late and I haven't really done that yet uh, I still would like to actually get her telling some real stories but um, a few weeks ago I took her to go see Gone with the Wind for its like 80th anniversary um, they released it in movie theaters for a couple days and while we were waiting for the movie to start just kind of out of the blue she busts out this whole story about when she was 12 years old 80 years ago her parents took her to the world's fair and you know all the different things she saw and then they saw these watches and she loved this watch so much her parents got her a really similar one for a gift and this is the watch that like she's always worn like I knew this watch I didn't know the whole story behind it and then she said you know it had it had stopped working um, maybe like a few months ago and um, and I said I would take it to the watch shop that we like so they actually were able to fix it and um, the day that I brought it back to her I just asked you know would she tell that story again so I could record it so that's what you're about to watch however she did not want her face to be on camera because um, you know she wasn't feeling camera ready which was fine so um, I mostly just focused on her hands holding the watch um, and then I've added in some other like pictures and things where I can so hope you enjoy this story from my grandma all right okay so here's the watch what is there for me to tell you uh, well you so the other day you just busted out of nowhere Oh, we were at the World's Fair 80 years ago and saw these cool watches and my parents got me a watch. So what's the story of this watch? The story of this watch is that we did go to an exhibit at the World's Fair in 1939 in New York. Do you want to know anything about the fair? You can tell me whatever you want. <clears throat> well, actually, I was 12 years old and my parents took me to the World's Fair. Actually, I was very lucky. I went there twice. And um, the World's Fair had all sorts of exhibits from all over the world, uh, from our country. And it, it was really exciting. It was, it was a beautiful thing to see. And it wasn't right in New York. It was in a place called Flushing Meadows. We went by train and it was really wonderful. Um, they had fountains and beautiful gardens and exhibits from everywhere. And we saw all the commercial exhibits, and we saw the amusement things that people could do, which were very interesting. And um, a few of them stick out in my mind. The most important one that I saw was General Motors. Um, they had us sit in little moving chairs, and we wound around the big studio, looking down on a, uh, a diorama. Well, I get, no, it wasn't a diorama. It was a, a landscape. <clears throat> urban and suburban, and in miniature, of course, and showed all these marvelous turnpikes and ro roads and highways and clover leaves and exit ramps, and it was so fantastic. It was the roads of the future, and everybody said, ha, oh, we never have anything like that. <laughs> and of course, now, you know, I mean, e even that when if we, we see it, it would be old-fashioned, but then we never dreamed we could ever have highways like that. But it was really very interesting. And in the amusement park, one big thing that stood out was the parachute jump. And then you would be strapped into a seat and hoisted way, 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 way up. And when you got up to the top, I don't know how high up it was, when you got up to the top, somehow the parachute that was strapped to you was let go, and you went zooming down. Did you do this? And I did it. I can't imagine you. I did it. Doing a parachute drop. Yes, it was so much fun. Um, and I'm not sure which parent I did it with. My mother was always a daredevil. Ah. And so, but I know that they did it. My mother and father did it together, but it might have been my mother that I went with. Anyway, after we did all those fun things, then we did go to the, the exhibits, and that brings us to my watch. And we went to the long jeans exhibit, and I don't know why, 
I don't think we were particularly interested in watches, but my mother and I saw this beautiful, beautiful watch that was rose gold and it had a band. At that time, women's watches usually had a brown cord for a watch band. And, <clears throat> and then of course the cord would be down each side of the watch, but then it would end with a clasp at, to close it at the wrist. And that of course would match the metal that the, the uh, watch was made of. And most watches then were like white gold or yellow gold. Um, you hardly ever saw rose gold. So we just thought that watch was just the most beautiful watch we had ever seen. And I, we probably talked about it all the way home. I don't know why. But anyway, when Christmas came, I was really, very surprised to open up my packages. And there was this dear little watch that I hold in my hand today. Rose gold. Lovely little brown band. Just like the one we had seen at Longines. Only my watch was a Hamilton. Um, Hamiltons at that time were um, a very, very good watch to have. Everybody had a Hamilton. And Hamilton Watch Company was in Lancaster. I don't know whether they're still there or not. Well, I know the company still exists. Does it really? Yeah, because when I took it to the watch shop, they were like, oh, it's a Hamilton. We, you know, we know it. It's on oh, our list. Da, da, da. I didn't know it yeah. still existed. Yeah. How about that? They said so, it's, it's a good brand. So anyway, I started wearing it. And I just always wore it. And of course, I wore it for years. And um, there were just sort of, sort of little short intervals when it took a little R&R, &R, went to the jewelers, <clears throat> had it maybe tuned up and cleaned. Uh, eventually, the bands gave way. Um, and then it got to the point where I don't think you could even buy one of those corded bands mm -hmm. anymore. <clears throat> but eventually I found a stretch Spidel. I don't, do they make Spidels anymore? Is that a brand? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I've seen like stretch bands like this. I don't. Well, well, okay. <laughs> <clears throat> and I did find the, the rose gold band. I hope this is the last band. I, it probably is the last band I'll buy. So, uh, except for those little periods of time when it was in the jewelers, uh, I've worn it. It's always been my dress watch. And um, I did pull out a picture that I have upstairs on the kitchen table that I wanted you to see. Um, 14 years later, in full formal attire, I'm standing there wearing this watch. And it's in 1953 in Paducah. <laughs> and I wanted you to see it. But anyway, I did, I wore it all that time um, until a couple of years ago, it just dropped dead. And I figured it was probably just had to go into the jewelers and have a little fixation. And then my darling granddaughter, who's my go-to person, came along and found a place where they fixed it and here it is and um, here I am 80 years later, <laughs> I'm able to use it again. And so that's how I got my little rose gold. Hamilton watch. Well, good. And you see they polished it all up for you? It looks beautiful. Yeah. It really does. Because when the guy handed it to me, he was like, I don't know if they fixed it. <laughs> and I said, well, it's all shiny. It wasn't this shiny when I dropped it off, so I assume they wouldn't have done all that if they hadn't worked on it. Yeah. And he said it, and he's like, well, I don't know how we can tell if it's working because there's no second hand. Right. Like, well, yeah, I guess I... They, I held it up to my ear and I heard a little tick, tick, tick. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm so happy. Um, I really don't need um, a material thing um, to remember my parents, but I had, I, I had wonderful parents. I had a wonderful upbringing, a wonderful childhood. And um, even though I don't need something... Uh, for me to know that they loved me. It's it's just nice to have it. If I lost it, the world wouldn't come to an end, but it's wonderful to have it. That's pretty impressive that that was your present when you were 12 mm -hmm. and you've worn it your whole life. 80 years, right? Yep, it's coming up to 80 years and I have worn it all this time. It was my go-to watch. 
I, I guess when we fell in love with it, it was a lasting love. <laughs> a love that went on forever. <laughs> okay, so you were a child of the Depression. <laughs> <clears throat> and my mother always said that the banks went up two days after my, do my younger sister was born. So they lost everything they had. So I know that even when I was 12 years old, um, I mean, we, we always had, I mean, we, we were never rich by any means, but we always got along and, and had what we needed. And, and yet I know that when they got this for me, it, it really didn't fit in the budget. And so I know it was, it was, well, I always knew they loved me. And I know that, you know, that it was, it was something they did out of love for me. And so I guess that's why it's, you know, it's always been very important to me. And so, so that's the story of my little watch. <laughs> you got it back. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> You're not in it? Go ahead. Unaccustomed as I am to public speaking. <laughs>